Welcome to module six of our course on financial accounting. This is our first of two modules on inventory. It's that crucial a topic that it deserved two modules. And this first module, a bit of a grab bag of inventory topics. There's three things I want to discuss in this video. And the first thing is products. And that's what you're doing when you're selling inventory. Products are different from services and a little bit more complicated. There's a reason we left this until module six. The second thing we'll talk about is just accounts receivable, actually the topic we talked about last chapter and how collecting AR is a pain and one solution to that pain, which creates accounting challenges. Uh, the final thing we'll talk about is freight. Uh, when you sell a service, you're not shipping anything. Well, with inventory, shipping starts to become an issue and we'll talk about some of the quirks around freight. So we'll do that all in this video and we'll do it all throughout the chapter, but this will be a useful video to introduce the topic. So the first thing was products are different from services. So here's a service example. You know, you sell a service. ABC Consulting Company provides consulting services for a client for $1,000 cash. All right, so we debit cash. We credit consulting rev for $1,000. Uh XYZ shoe company, shoe store buys shoes from Nike for $120 cash, then turns around and sells them to their customer for $200 cash. So when a company, and in this class, a company is always going to buy their product from a supplier for one price, presumably a low price, and sell it to a customer for a higher price. And that's, you know, think of Walmart, that's the model, right? Companies that sell inventory, that's a common model. If you're interested in how to deal with it when a company makes its own inventory, that's a whole course. That is a management accounting course, and I've got a course for it here on YouTube. But for now, we're gonna assume almost the Walmart model Model. We bring in products that somebody else makes, you know, Nike makes the shoes, we buy them from Nike and we turn around and sell them at a higher price to our own customer. So here, XYZ Shoe Store buys the product from its customer for $120 cash. So when they buy shoes, they don't debit shoes, they debit inventory, of course. And they would never buy just one pair, but that's, you know, that's this example. And they credit cash. And of course, they would probably buy them on account. Okay, so they bought the shoes. Now when they sell them and when they earn revenue, so this is us earning revenue as a consultancy, a debit cash credit consulting revenue. When you earn revenue as a merchandiser, it's actually a double journal entry you have to do. You have to record one part of the entry to record the fact that you've received some money, you've earned some revenue. And the second part of the entry that is new here is the customer took some of our assets with them, right? They walked out of our store with a bag full of our assets, our inventory. So let's look at this transaction. So the second transaction, this is the key one. This is the, uh, uh, what's new here. So uh, let's start with the uh, cu customer gives us $200 cash. So we debit cash 200 and we credit sales rev because this is us doing what we do to earn money. 200. Now, what's the other piece of this? Well, they walked out of the store with some of our inventory. So we credit inventory for how much inventory did they walk out with? 120. That was our cost on the inventory. And this creates a new expense account, one we haven't seen before. And the expense account is called cost of goods sold. And we're going to abbreviate that through our class as COGS, cost of goods sold. And our cost of the goods that we sold was $120. This creates a new and totally crucial uh, relationship. You'll see this on the top of a merchandiser's income statement, a company that sells inventory. This is what their income statement looks like. They're going to have their sales revenue at the top, which here it's 200 bucks. The next line down will be COGS, cost of goods sold, 120. And then the next line down is a key number and it's a new subtotal and it's called, we're gonna call it in our class, gross profit, but you 
often hear this called gross margin. So keep your eye open for that when you're doing your own course, what your class calls it. But in this video series, we're going to call it gross profit. And our gross profit here is $80. And you can see just revenue minus the expense, cost of goods sold, even though it's an expense. It's our first expense I can think of so far that doesn't have the word expense in it. Sales minus COGS equals gross profit. And this is a crucial number if you're running a business. You keep an eye on your gross profit, a critical number to understand well. So we know if we're, you know, Walmart and we're bringing in these Nikes costing us 120, we sell it to our customer for 200, we know we make $80 on every pair of shoes we sell. And that's an important number. And it's so important. In fact, there's a little ratio that companies do. So here's the dollar amount. They like to look at it as a percentage. So if we say sales are a hundred percent, well, what's 120 out of 200? costs here are 60%, right? 120 divided by 200 is 0.6, that's 60%. And 80 divided by 200 is 40%. Well, this 40% is a number that will be talked about in board meetings, in shareholder meetings. They'll say, oh, our margins, our gross profit percentage is up or down. And they're referring to this number. If you ever watch the show Shark Tank, a favorite show of mine, they'll often say, hey, well, you know, as a person comes in, they say, I've got this new invention. It's a fancy new pen. And they say, oh, what do you, what do you uh, charge for it? And the person will say, oh, I charge $20 for my pen. I'll say, oh, what does it cost? Costs you to make it. And the person will say, Oh, it makes, uh, it cost me $8, right? And they'll go, All the sharks in their mind, they're going, Okay, 20 minus 8 is 12. And they're calculating not only the amount, $12 per unit in gross profit, they're doing this percentage number in their minds. And they're saying, Is this good gross profit or a bad gross profit? It is a key number for any company or any inventor <laughs> that sells a product. So, uh, I, I hope I'm illustrating the first point here well, and that is that product-based companies, it's just a little more complicated than service-based companies. I know we're up for it, but it is introducing new challenges to us. Uh, a second challenge that it introduced gets introduced this chapter is related to something we learned last chapter, which is it sucks to be owed money, right? You have people owing you money. If you're operating a business, people owe you money all the time and it sucks to be owed money. Now there is a stick version of getting your money, which is you wait until, you know, the due date, and then you start sending nasty letters to the people who haven't paid and you're chasing them. And, and what we find is it's very labor intensive and it's a pain in the neck. Um, as a consequence, some companies have introduced, many companies have introduced a carrot. And the carrot is rather than chasing you with a stick, the enticement to pay early is you offer people discounts to pay early. And you're going to see this code all through the chapter 210 and 30, something like this. And here's what this stands for. Two percent, that's a percentage, this two, whatever number comes before the slash is a percentage. This is the size of the discount. So you get a 2% discount. If you pay within 10 days, that's the 10. The N30 is otherwise pay in 30. And the idea is, you know, that's when interest and penalties and you're overdue at 30, right? 30 is the due date. So 2% discount if you pay me in the next 10 days, otherwise just pay the full amount in 30. Now, why does this happen? And why does it matter? You know, 2% discount, you know, if I go to Best Buy tomorrow, and they say, Hey, we're having a big sale 2% off everything in the store, you're like 2% who cares, I don't get out of bed for 2%. Why is this an enticing discount? And why does it entice anybody to pay early 2% like off? Well, the answer is, they already bought the product, right? Is this is not enticing them to come into your store. But if they've already bought the product, it should be an enticement to get them to pay early. And if you just think about this, you know, you go, okay, 2% return on your money over, let's just say it's a 30 day period. It's actually better than that, but 30 day period. Well, if you impute that to a year, it's like more than 20% 
guaranteed interest on your money, right? Just to pay early. So it's a smart decision to take you up on the offer. So yes, we will be offered these discounts as a buyer. We'll also offer the discounts as a seller. Now, again, this creates accounting challenges as you might guess. And let's think of an accounting challenge. Well, let's say I bought something for a hundred dollars and I do take, bought some inventory from a supplier for a hundred dollars and I do pay early. So I get the 2% discount. So I end up only paying $98. Well, how much is my inventory worth? Is it worth a hundred? Or is it worth 98? I bought a hundred dollar piece of inventory, but then I took 2% off because I paid early. Is this $98 in inventory or hundred? The answer is this is a $98 piece of inventory. But isn't that strange though, that if I pay within 10 days, it's a $98 piece of inventory. But if I pay within 11 days, it's a hundred dollar piece of inventory. You know, the asset itself hasn't changed at all. It's the same thing I bought. And it's just like I paid one day before one day later, and it changes the value of the asset. And the answer is yes. And when I think about this, I always think about my wife and I our shopping habits. So this happened to us one time. Uh, we were at a toothpaste, I called my wife, I said, Hey, can you get me that toothpaste I like on your way home? And for whatever reason, I happened to be in the store that day, I, I don't normally, uh, you know, we, we, divide labor in our house. You know, I, I do certain chores, but her main chore, one of her main chores is she does most of the shopping. I do other things though. So in any event, uh, I asked her to go to the store and get the, the toothpaste when, or when she got a chance. And it just so happened I was in the store that day and I thought, ah, yeah, screw it. I'll buy the toothpaste myself. And so I went and I bought the toothpaste for $5. She is a coupon clipper and she got the exact same toothpaste. I mean, literally same barcode, same size, same everything. But because she's a coupon clipper, she got it for $3. Now, it's very strange, at least as you're thinking of this, that if we look at these in terms of asset value, I have a $5 asset. And she has a $3 asset, even though it's the exact same product. And so that's something you got to kind of wrap your head around. The cost is what you've paid for it. So if you get the discount, the cost of your inventory is a little bit lower. If you don't get the discount, the cost of the inventory is a little bit higher. And we'll look at all sorts of scenarios where companies will be getting and not getting the discount. Okay. The final piece here is kind of related. It's related to shipping costs and freight is funny. So here's two scenarios and we'll deal with similar ones in our questions. This chapter, we're looking at t-shirts and we find two t-shirts on, you know, online shops, right? We're online shopping, we're comparison shopping, and I get the identical t-shirt site number one and site number two site. Number one says the t-shirt's going to cost you $25 free shipping. Site number two says the t-shirt's going to cost you $20 and there's a $5 shipping surcharge. Well, from the perspective of an accountant, these are the same thing. These are both $25 t-shirts. So the t-shirt here is $25 and the t-shirt here is $25. Now, this is something where when I was a beginning accountant, my intuition would have been wrong and your intuition might be wrong. You might think, no, it's a $20 t-shirt you know, asset, right? This t-shirt, something you own and control. It has something of value and a $5 shipping expense. Well, when you buy inventory and you buy any asset, the shipping cost becomes part of the cost of the asset. And I hope this t-shirt example illustrates that, right? If you were comparison shopping and you said, oh, I got a $25 t-shirt with free shipping or a $20 t-shirt with $5 shipping. The truth is in both scenarios, you have a $25 t-shirt again, easy when we're discussing this example gets trickier in real life because the tendency is you see this scenario and you go, Oh, I paid $5 in shipping. It's a $5 shipping expense. No, no, no. When you pay the $5 in shipping, you don't debit shipping expense. You debit t-shirt or in this case inventory. So those were three quirky concepts that are going to come into our journal entries for chapter six. The best way to learn accounting though is to do examples and we got lots of them coming. I can't wait to get started. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. The next video in our series is right up here. And if you want a supercut of all of the videos in this series, that's the one down below.